When I got the call to come and speak tonight from Bob Noor, he, I said, what should I talk about? Well, talk about your call to seminary. And I said, yes. And then afterwards, I thought, oh no, am I called to seminary? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm three years in now, so <laughs> I'm here. Um, but the word called really isn't the word I would use to describe my story. Um, I'm not at Kelvin Seminary because I feel like I was called. I feel like I'm at Kelvin Theological Seminary in the hybrid program because I was invited to be there. So you're probably wondering who invited me, and I'm going to tell you. <laughs> but right now, um, I'm a mom of four. My kids are seven, five, four, and one. And I had one of the children during seminary. My first week of intensives, I found out I was pregnant. And we had a discussion about if I was going to continue or not. But I did. I'm still here. Um, I was a worship director for 10 years, and I felt like that was my calling. And when I had my second child, I stepped aside. Um, before I had kids, before I met my husband, I lived in this very um, open way with the Holy Spirit. I was a musician, a composer. Um, I was the one who said, um, Lord, where can I go? Send me, send me, please. Um, and God really did show up to answer that prayer for me. I was able to go evangelize on a metal boat down the Amazon. I spent time in Haiti. And then I took a job as a worship director in Grand Rapids for 10 years. So when um, I had my second child and I sort of dropped out of ministry cold turkey, I thought, well, now motherhood is my calling. And it is, and it's such a beautiful gift. But I'll tell you, that is when the hunger um, began to grow, and it was a really fierce hunger um, for God's word. Um, so it started with Bible Study Fellowship. I don't know if any of you have heard of that ministry. I started going to a Bible Study Fellowship class, and I took a class called Homiletics, and that's when I disappeared. Now, Homiletics will do that to you. <laughs> um, and I just disappeared into my study every night. And as you know, maybe, uh, you can't do proper Homiletics without knowing ancient Greek and Hebrew, so I began to buy books on Amazon. Um, beginner Greek, beginner Hebrew. Easier beginner Greek, easier beginner Hebrew. <laughs> now, I love languages, but I, I wouldn't say that they necessarily come easy, so the book pile was growing. And I came up with a list of 10 words, and I showed up at BSF uh, with, yeah, 10 Hebrew words that I thought was just going to blow the ceiling off the place with my biblical knowledge. <laughs> And the leader of the Bible study group said, thank you, Jennifer. Anyone else? <laughs> uh, and I came home and I told my husband, Nick, I said, I don't know if this is the space for that. Um, and he responded like any wonderful, encouraging husband would by sending me an email. <laughs> Now, this email was a discussion between Western and Calvin Theological Seminary for their distance programs. So I could have an actual teacher help me through some of this. And um, so I, I uh, picked Calvin, as you can tell. And um, it has been such a blessing. And I have to say a huge thank you to my sweet Nick, because that is where my invitation came from. Um, he is the one who invited me to Calvin. I don't know if I would be here if he hadn't sent me that email. And he was loving me in a way that the Bible encourages him to. I mean, he really saw me and saw uh, my hunger and um, saw that I was maybe a bit more of a Mary than a Martha. And um, it does come with a cost. Two weeks out of the year, I'm at Calvin Seminary for the full week, and he watched the kids. Um, like I told you, their ages, they're young, 
and my mom and his mom and our families watched the kids for me. And um, I just want to say a huge thank you because I think I had that longing beforehand. I had saved up about $15,000 if I ever went to seminary. And we hadn't really even, I mean, we talked about it, but not really so much. And I was, I don't even know if that would stretch out the whole, the whole amount. And um, your generosity um, has meant so much to our family and taking that financial burden off of us and off of my husband. Um, so I wanna say a, a huge thank you to the Benefactors Trust, a special warm thank you to Larry and Christine Kieft um, for the Family Scholarship, the Boss Women's Scholarship, the DeVries Family Scholarship, the Veltman Preaching Award, and Class of Zealand. These are the people and um, who has supported me personally. I want to open up just a, a window so that you can see what, maybe what a distance student has, um, has the ability to participate in and what your generosity is contributing to. Um, so far, I've had classes in missions, in uh, church history, Greek, Hebrew, in independent study in Ruth, um, context, person, vocation classes, and a care for the death and dying class. Um, and I'm now currently in preaching as well. And um, I keep asking God, um, what can I do to use this skill that you're, you know, putting in me? And um, I, I actually get really worked up about it sometimes and worried that, you know, I'm a mom. What am I going to do with this? And God still loves to answer this prayer. Um, m the neighbors that move down and down the street are Buddhist. I have been able to sit down and read Hebrew um, with a Jewish family. I have a friend from Russia that I've been able to talk about my seminary experience to. And I just, I feel like um, I'm in the distance hybrid program in a distance hybrid mission field. <laughs> And, but I need to tell you that the greatest thing that I've learned in seminary so far is that I've learned how to listen to God's word. And I just want to share with you what God has been saying to me when I'm in his word. He says, shh, what do you hear? And I say to him, what's my calling? Shh. What do you hear? The world, our world is crying for Jesus. Take care of my kids. Wow, that sure sounds like the calling of a mother. Oh, wow, that sure sounds like the calling of a pastor. Maybe they aren't so different. What else do you hear? Well, I'll tell you what I don't hear. I don't hear enough of Jesus' name. I don't hear enough of it in the media. I don't hear enough of it on Facebook or the news. And in times like this, we need to hear more of Jesus' name. And this is where I come to my calling. I don't know what I'm going to do necessarily with this seminary degree. You don't need a seminary degree to go out and proclaim Jesus' name. And I need to tell you, maybe this is preaching, that he is my calling. He will always be my calling, my greatest and highest calling. And I want to thank you for showing me with your support and for showing all of us with your support that making Christ our primary focus in this life is a worthy cause. Thank you for the invitation.